Slam your coffee and gear up, commanders. We're going back in for another battle. In today's video, I'm going to break down a recent moon battle I took part in. But first, I just need to collect these crates right here, and then we'll bug out. Okay, we're good. Let's head out. Always try to use the terrain to your advantage. Here, I'm not trying to hide from the phantom. I'm using the crest of the hill to shield me from his weapons. While at the same time, I can fire down on him. Once he moves around to come after me, then I go over the top to take the beacon. Lucky for me, he followed and I got a kill as well. Now I'm being fired on by the Alguang's built-in rockets, and I start to take fire from the Ravana on the left. To no avail, I hug the wall trying to avoid the Alguang's rockets. I have two choices. I can wait here and die from the rockets pounding down on top of the Strider while getting no damage points, and possibly the Ravana will come after me anyhow, or I can attack the Ravana attempting to keep forward momentum. My immediate threat is the Ravana, so I choose to attack. The choice pays off. I get a triple kill before I start to take Pulsar fire from an unknown bot, but ultimately I succumb to the Alguang's rocket attack. It also appeared that the Ravana's weapons were weak, which worked to my advantage. Here, I choose to drop in with a fin rear, outfitted with an ember and two igniters. For speed, I do not activate the fin rear's ability as I move directly towards the center of the map to the tunnel entrance in an attempt to prevent any enemy from capturing our home beacon and, of course, fight for the center beacon. As I approach the tunnel and lock on to what I believe to be a Ravana, I activate the fin rear's shape-shifting ability, engaging my heavy weapon, the ember. This also boosts my damage damage resistance by 50%. This allows me to put more firepower on the target, forcing him to back out of the tunnel. But I continue to push through the tunnel. As I exit the tunnel on the other side, again I go into defensive mode, activating my ember. At this point, I engage the Ravana on my right. Checking my 10 o'clock or left side, I notice another enemy bot, a Strider. Immediately I look back to my right as I am now taking Pulsar fire and run the risk of being locked down in the open. To my front right, I see an Ares that is engaging me with the Pulsars. I'm not ready to sacrifice my Fenrir at this point, so I decide to retreat back into the tunnel to cover. This tactical decision pays off as I am able to avoid the Ares retribution and then re-emerge from the tunnel to eliminate him as well as the Ravana that attacked while engaging the Ares for a double kill. At this point, I make a fatal error. I decide to move to the enemy home beacon in an attempt to have a different angle of fire on the enemy. It was a rash decision as I didn't look around to see where friendlies or my teammate were. As a result, I am swarmed by the enemy. Tyr, Al Jun, Leech, and Al Guang all unload on me at the same time. But with the help of a griffin, I'm able to lock down a triple kill. I drop in with the Arthur now in an attempt to keep the momentum of the battle in our favor as we are winning the battle by beacon control. Moving toward the center of the battlefield, I see the enemy is now attempting to take our home beacon. I take a quick single shot to help out my teammates, but then continue moving forward while simultaneously scanning and assessing the battlefield. At this point, the enemy now has three of the five beacons. We will soon lose our lead if we don't get a beacon back soon.
I make an attempt to move up and over the parapet and engage an Al Guang, but I'm soon receiving damage from an Al Jun with Vipers. The Al Jun is probably the worst foe for the Titans. It can deal a lot of damage quick while in stealth mode and then retreat to safety and cover. Wait for its stealth flight mode to regenerate and then attack again. Luckily, a friendly Al Jun comes in for support and chases the enemy Al Jun off the parapet where he had landed. I decided to continue advancing forward at this point. My Arthur is death marked by the enemy. I hold fast on the ramp for a second, but I keep moving forward. There's not much I can do. The Arthur moves too slow. The only tactical decision at this point is to just keep moving forward and engaging the enemy. Do as much damage as possible before I lose my Arthur. I open my shields to gain more speed. The enemy is now taking the fourth beacon. I quickly close my shields again as the Al Jun with Vipers rises above the wall and comes in for another attack. I begin to take fire from the rear by another Al Jun, Twin Avengers. They've successfully got me in a crossfire. I re-enter the battle with my own Al Jun. Immediately I spot one of the other Al Juns and he's just taken flight and focused on a target. I engage the Al Jun mid-air. Instantly I switch to a Titan robot to my right, engage and destroy it as well. As I'm landing, I can see flames and bullets flying past me from my o'clock. Knowing my landing has left me vulnerable, I quickly look left towards the tunnel and lay down suppressive fire as I move away from the tunnel entrance. Using the parapet for cover, I fire my Avengers over the top at the Al Ming. It proves to be very effective. I have fire support from another teammate as well as healing from another. As a team, we managed to destroy the Al Ming. Between my own onboard healing and the tear now healing me, I have recovered quickly. I take time here behind the wall to assess the situation again. The battle has shifted in favor of the enemy now. Our beacon bar has dropped below theirs. They control three beacons and we have less than three minutes to go. I take flight and engage an enemy Fenrir that's attempting to take our home beacon. I land in between the two parapets and attempt to take the cover in the upper tunnel. But the other Al Ming lands and there's no escaping it. I select my other Al Jun with embers and fly towards the Al Ming, hoping I can cause some damage to it, but he's managed to find cover. I land on the opposite side of the center dome and hug the parapet, expecting him to take flight and attempt to engage me. I'm lucky this time, he focuses his fire on another bot, so again I use the parapet for cover and fire just over the top engaging the Al Ming. We now have three beacons. The Al Ming is destroyed and I take flight. I spot two targets, one left, one right. I can't get a clear shot at the one on the left and he's being engaged by another friendly. So I engage the Leo on the right and again take cover inside the dome, hoping I can take the center beacon back, giving us four beacons. But we simultaneously lose a beacon and remain with only three and behind on the beacon bar. Looks like we're going to lose this battle, but I'm not giving up. We still have have a chance. We have the advantage with 5 to 3. Noticing the Al Jun to my left is landing, I decide to engage him. I know he's vulnerable as he's just landed and he's the closest target. Unfortunately for me, he has phase shifted and I wasn't able to destroy him. Now I must land and will be vulnerable if he decides to engage me. Compounding my situation, I must remain in the open in order to capture a fourth beacon if we stand any chance of winning this battle. I'm able to capture the beacon unimpeded but immediately take fire from another Al Jun. It's four on three with less than 35 seconds to go in the battle. It's either side's win at this point. I press the edge of my cover, taking some damage from the avalanches, but I know I need to in order to maximize my flight time and have the advantage as I attempt to take another beacon, ensuring our victory. Both enemy Al Juns are heavily damaged and seek cover as I take flight. Just as my flight ends and I land on their home beacon, Titan rounds the corner and he's bearing down on me. As fate would have it, I'm saved by the clock. It was an intense, close battle, and we emerged victorious. This battle shows that 
that you should never throw in the towel. Keep playing your best game till the end. It may make the difference in whether your team wins or loses the battle. Okay, Commanders, I hope that was somewhat helpful for you. Hopefully, you got some takeaways from it. Now put your gear away and grab a beer and relax. Lesson's over for today. But before you leave, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you haven't done so already, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell. See you next week, Commanders.